Welcome to Double Your WDW, the channel that gives you the best Disney World tips, tricks, and advice to plan your ultimate Disney adventure. So if you want to plan the absolute best Disney vacation for your family, you're in the right place. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can be the first to know about what's new in the world of Disney. It also makes Mickey smile. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. All right, let's get into it. Disney on Thanksgiving is amazing. It is very crowded though, so expect a lot of people start early. Uh, pack a variety of clothes because it's hot during the day and cool at night. It's absolutely gorgeous. Everything, they don't do a whole lot of Thanksgiving uh, decor or anything. It's all Christmas, but you can get a Thanksgiving meal and it's been wonderful to be here for the holidays. Thanksgiving dinner, we ate at the Hollywood Brown Derby restaurant, which is in Hollywood Studios and based off of the actual Hollywood Brown Derby restaurant. So you'll see like caricatures of celebrities up on the wall and they had just the regular menu, but also a Thanksgiving menu as well. That's if you're looking for just a more traditional Thanksgiving meal, but I thought it was fabulous. The highlight of yesterday, which was Thanksgiving, was all the Christmas decor at Hollywood Studios. They deck everything out in old school Christmas uh, with music and just all sorts of kitschy kind of decor. And it's just a ton of fun and really beautiful. And it's my favorite of the parks at the holidays. The Christmas desserts are probably one of my favorite parts of being here this time of year. We got to sample a bunch yesterday at Hollywood Studios. Um, just really beautiful, decadent desserts. Like, I mean, just like you wouldn't imagine. So um, hoping at each park we can try some of the crazy Christmas desserts. Uh, this morning we went to Animal Kingdom and we walked around Pandora and just really explored the area. Uh, Tanner took advantage of their Wilderness Explorers Guide, which is like a free scavenger hunt that kids can do throughout the park. You go through this book, you get stickers as you find things throughout the park. So that was a lot of fun, just a free extra for the kids. Um, after Pandora, we went on Expedition Everest and we went over to Dinosaur. We met some characters and then we decided to take a break at the resort, which is a must, especially when you have little ones. The Boardwalk's a really cool hotel. Um, it's one of my favorites because it is one of the few hotels where you can actually walk to two parks. You can walk to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios from the hotel. So it's not only a regular Disney hotel, but it's also a vacation club hotel, which is part of their timeshare. So we ended up renting one of the villas from the timeshare to get a huge room at a big discount. And it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, after lunch yesterday, we went over to Disney Springs and it was Black Friday and it was madness. Disney Springs is where all the shopping and dining is at uh, Disney World and it was chaos, but we found some delicious holiday treats that we took advantage of. We did a little bit of shopping, we hit the Lego store. Oh gosh, uh, I had this amazing bubble waffle with mint chocolate chip ice cream and it was just, I can't believe how delicious it was. It was one of the best things I've ever eaten. After that, we went to the boardwalk for dinner, which wasn't the original plan, but when you're traveling with a two-year-old, you have to be able to adapt. So we went back over to the boardwalk and walked around and had pizza for dinner over at the pizza window. And we enjoyed a dinner and then just a nice leisurely evening in the hotel room. This morning, we got up fairly early to make our way over to Epcot. I really wanted to rope drop Epcot. That park opens at 9 a.m. and we can walk there from our hotel. It's a quick walk. So I really wanted to take advantage of the fact that we're so close. So we walked over through the boardwalk to the International Gateway entrance at Epcot. We went straight to the Norway Pavilion in the World Showcase because that's where everything frozen is. Those lines can get really, really long. So we decided to go straight there we met Anna and Elsa, and we went on Frozen Ever After, which is one of the best rides as far as animatronics go. It's a ton of fun and absolutely amazing. So that was our morning. We had a few fast pass. We did uh, Test Track, 
which is a lot of fun. You get to design your own car, you get to go on all these road tests, and it's a blast, especially for the kids. Uh, after that, we went over to uh, the Seas Pavilion to go on uh, the Seas with Nemo and friends, and then just walk around the aquarium. We hit the World Showcase a little bit more, and then we just made our way back to the resort for a little bit. Are you Anna? Yeah. Hi, Anna. Let me step in. Okay. Uh, so yesterday afternoon was kind of a quiet afternoon. Kennedy wasn't feeling well. So we went to the pool, we hung out, we just enjoyed the resort. Uh, we decided to eat dinner just in at the resort. And then after that, we wanted to make our way over to Animal Kingdom. We wanted to check out Pandora in the evening, all lit up, and see if we could find some fun treats and see what the holiday decor looks like there. Because this is the first year that Animal Kingdom has done holiday decor. So we watched the Tree of Life come to life and they have the projections all timed to music and it's festive and fun and a really cool experience that I don't know that I can even describe. We went over to Pandora and we experienced Pandora at night, which is absolutely amazing. Everything is lit up under black lights, everything from like the cement to the plants and just everything around you is lit up and interactive and it's amazing. We got some treats over at Tamu Tamu, just a giant Simba cookie and kind of relaxed at that park before checking out the Festival of the Lights, the evening show. And then after that, we decided to call it a night. So this morning we went to the Magic Kingdom. Today was Magic Kingdom Day. And the, the reason I wanted to do Magic Kingdom today is because it's also a Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party Day. So that means Magic Kingdom closes at 6 p.m. for regular guests. So most people are avoiding the Magic Kingdom. Anybody who doesn't have a, a hopper pass is gonna be skipping Magic Kingdom today. So we were able to get a ton accomplished. We did a bunch of rides. We did Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Haunted Mansion, Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, The Little Mermaid, just to name a few. Um, we did Pirate League with Tanner, my eight-year-old. You get e either a pirate or a mermaid makeover and you can do anything from just like the face painting and just some accessories to a full costume. It's a ton of fun. We also did a first haircut over at Harmony Barbershop which is kind of a great hidden little secret. It's in the very front of the Magic Kingdom over by the fire station. And uh, you can get a first haircut, it's only $25. And it's just a fun, unique experience for a first haircut. So we got a lot accomplished today. <laughs> we went to Epcot to spend the evening at the Festival of the Holidays and we did walk around the World Showcase for quite a while but we ended up spending more time in Future World. The thing that I like about the festivals is that everybody heads over to the World Showcase so Future World is pretty quiet so we were able to do some rides and meet some characters over in Future World. Our daughter got to meet Baymax which was quite the highlight for her and joy and sadness and we got to do some rides and just spend some time over there. Um, we did make our way back over to the World Showcase because we wanted some fun desserts. So we went over to Caramel Couche and had some amazing caramel treats over in the Germany Pavilion. We had cookies and popcorn and we got a giant pretzel and I think it was a highlight for our children. This morning, we got up early and made our way back over to the Magic Kingdom. We got a ton done. It's a cool morning, which was really, really nice. The holiday weekend is over, so crowds felt minimal, and it just was a pleasant and not quite as busy and hot experience. So we enjoyed Haunted Mansion. We did Space Mountain. We did Splash Mountain, even though it was only like 60 degrees at the time, um, but that meant no wait for that ride, so that was fantastic. So we got a lot accomplished over there. Then we decided to take the monorail over to Epcot. We had lunch at the Garden Grill, which is uh, a favorite of our two-year-olds. The food is really, really great. It's served family style and uh, a lot of character interactions. You meet Mickey, Pluto, and Chip and Dale, and so that was a huge highlight for the kids. After that, we walked through Epcot, went back to our resort to rest a little bit, and tonight we'll be heading back over to Epcot 
to hit the International Festival of the Holidays and the Candlelight Processional. Tonight's celebrity narrator is Neil Patrick Harris. I'm really excited. It's going to be a chilly night, but it should be a lot of fun. We walked over to Epcot to check out the Candlelight Processional, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, because we had lunch at the Garden Grill and had booked a Candlelight Processional dining package, we had guaranteed seating for the show. So it's the telling of the story of Christmas, the biblical story of Christmas, and they have celebrity narrators and they have a full choir, which is made up of Disney cast members. So that's really awesome as well. Our celebrity narrator was Neil Patrick Harris, and he's the best, like he really puts a fun spin on it uh, during the show. And it was amazing. We had a great time. Even the baby was into it, bopping along and dancing. So the Candlelight Processional is uh, definitely a highlight of the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. After the processional, we went back to the boardwalk. We checked out the gingerbread displays and the goodies that they had there for sale. So we had gingerbread martini and some cookies and treats a coconut gingerbread macaroon that was absolutely delicious. So there are a ton of fun treats in the lobby of the Boardwalk Hotel around the holidays. Last night we went to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. We used the in-room babysitting service for the first time and I was a little nervous about it, but the kids ended up having a great time. They got to just hang out, eat pizza, the sitter brought toys and games for them. Uh, our two-year-old did a craft, so that was a success. Uh, Kurt and I went to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, just adults. We saw the Christmas time parade. We saw uh, Minnie's fireworks show. We got to go on a ton of rides with little to no weight. There was snowfall on Main Street, a lot of fun. Um, special uh, magic shots if you're interested in some fun photographs of the family at the party. I had a blast. It was worth the party ticket. Some of my favorite uh, rides had really great Christmas overlays. Space Mountain had red and green lights playing and Christmas music blasting. The Speedway had Christmas lights set up all along the track. And what's really cool is if you take the People Mover, which is a ride that goes through Tomorrowland, it goes in and out of these rides. So you can see a lot of the overlays if you're interested in doing that, but maybe don't want to ride Space Mountain. I think my favorite part is the snow on Main Street. It's something so special. They do it during the parade and then at the end of the fireworks. But we decided to leave the Christmas party after the fireworks show. So we hopped on the monorail to make our way over to Epcot. Epcot had extra magic hours going on that evening, so it, the park was open until 11.30, so we got there a little before closing, and we were able to do uh, the Grand Fiesta tour and then walk right on to Frozen Ever After. So that was definitely a highlight because that ride usually is like an hour wait. So now we're at the airport, we're making our way back to Chicago, and I'm expecting what, maybe 20, 20 degree weather when we get there, so we're in for a, a cold awakening. As chilly as it was in Orlando, it's a lot colder in Chicago.